festival of plays and clay white has outdone himself my message of motivation was from yeah um, i listened was from, it, it was um it was really good yes it was very emotional um especially the ending you know when it really becomes about living and um facing life in the face of death you know yeah. so it's it's been awesome and a good morning to all the joy fm listeners who were shouting out of their cars. You know, I came out of the backstage and, and you know how the National Theatre is. And they were shouting out of their cars. Hi, we listen to you and driver. Say hello to Daniel. You guys are really funny. I mean, there were like so many of them. So good morning to you guys and thank you for tuning in um, to Joy yeah, And good morning to Mr. Morning. Buckman and your daughter, Rebecca, who uh, were talking to me outside outside the theatre yesterday. It was, it, was a great, it was great meeting the both of you and you guys really, really inspire us, all of us who listen to us every morning. Raymond, you let's begin with the stories because I don't want to ask where you were last night. Oh, I was asleep. <laughs> as is expected. Of people at night. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, the Daily Graphic is reporting this morning, Kantanka launches armored vehicle with range finder. I'll show you the vehicle later on. Mm-hmm. And, and, and Christians also in New Year with watch night services. There's one about government suspending Unipass takeover of single window system. That's what's happening at the ports and we are talking about that. Now, there's a story about 2 billion bailouts for 7 local banks. And this is the 7... We are not able to meet the 400 million minimum capital requirements in this case. So those are stories there. But it's an interesting one on the back page too. Now, ECOWAS boost free SHS with 2,750 tons of cereals. And you can see the delivery to the Ministry of Agric in this particular case. Now, properties wasted in Chocosis Concombers violent clash. That's also at the back page of the daily graphic. I'll give you virtually everything you need to know about it later on. Yes, and let's just say good morning to all the hardworking journalists at the Daily Graphic. Yeah. They are our only newspaper which is working today. In fact, um, so today you are going to get an in-depth Daily Graphic review yeah. uh, beyond the online stories that we bring. I think most of the papers have said that they'll be back to work tomorrow. Yeah, yeah so we are saying good morning to the Daily Graphic for beating them to the tape. I mean, yeah. Because um, that's the only paper we have today. <laughs> but anyway, oh, yeah. <laughs> what other stories do we have? Um... We are doing um, NDC must return to 31st December revolution values or forget it. That's according to Nuruddin Idrisu. Two in court for seizing AK-47 rifle from policeman. That's also from the graphic, but online.com. And BBC is saying that um, the Chinese president says Taiwan must and will be reunited with China. All that's, right. That's about what I have. Hey, Raymond, the biggest story really for the morning. Yes, okay, let's let's start with that particular story. Of course, I mean, we, we, we've been through this story before. We told you that some amount of money is being raised by the government of the Republic of Ghana to make sure that seven local banks do not get to go under because they can't meet the minimum capital requirement. The Bank of Ghana some years ago decided to raise the capital requirement f- from some 120 million to 400. This is because there's been a lot of talk about whether the financial sector, sector especially banks, can be sustainable under the current arrangements. And the recent happenings in that particular sector is making people believe that there's a lot of problems there. Mm-hmm. You do record that September 2017, there was, I mean, the general call that that particular 400 ought to be reviewed. In the course of this year, you remember on so many occasions, the Association of Local Banks and their directors came out to say that this uh, 400 million is going to cripple the sector. They may not be able to raise it. They need more time to raise it, especially mindful of what was currently happening in the sector. Liquidity was becoming a huge challenge, so they needed yeah. more time. The Bank of Ghana insisted that just stick with it. If you don't have it, we can downgrade you to make your uh, savings and loans uh, institutions from the commercial bank that you happen to be, and all of that. But it looks like government is saying we can't let them all suffer in this case. We are not opposed to the policy. That's what government is saying. But we think we can influence how the rest of them get to be part of this. You know that the first December, uh, two days ago, was the deadline. Yes. That all these banks were supposed to meet it. That's Monday. Yes. Apparently, the understanding is that two, two, uh, seven, these seven banks actually at different stages. They are not all giving the same amount of money, let's be clear. Mm-hmm. Some of them are going to get more than others depending on the need in this case and the requirements so if you had raised 150 million and it is left with 250 million that's the amount of money that the uh, finance ministry was going to help you with and this is true they're raising on some bonds to make sure that we can improve the system and not get more banks i mean especially they're thinking around local banks that they are the hope of our economy and that we should be able to improve it 
actually the finance sector relying also on the system that's supposed to allow we be convinced that we are participating actively in that sector too so that is what i mean they didn't name the banks that that is what we but again the understanding is that this is not to cause any panic so that if you don't hear the name of your bank it might be that uh, there's something happening in fact the but the daily graphic has potential beneficiaries it mentions adb it mentions the heritage bank prudential premium the national investment bank the investor merchant bank and the omni bank as potential beneficiaries in this case i mean of course and that ought to be stressed because it's unclear whether these are actually the people who will be the final beneficiaries at the end of the day so that is the good news on that front philip nanfru will be joining us on the super morning show today and we'll be doing all the analysis and getting more details of this uh, but raymond if government is taking a loan to save the banking sector well to save some banks in the banking sector some would say that it's a good move uh, because we are still keeping that local capacity anyway we we're talking yesterday about how almost every sector in the economy seems to be controlled largely uh, by foreign interest uh, what do you make of that good move or, or bad raymond okay now but l- let's be clear i actually think that it's a step in the right direction i mean listen I, I i first believed that the 400 million was not going to ensure any stringent system it was also not going to ensure and um, i've seen this argument be made by others too at least we sought to create the impression that having 400 million meant that you are less likely to be insolvent anytime soon but the deals in the last financial crisis have shown us that you can still have a lot of money mm-hmm. and still engage in a lot of very fictitious work which may affect all of this and put you in a very terrible state and that the main issues we ought to deal with is the people at the central bank following the rules and cracking the whip when they have to do so which is what Selon brantier raised yeah. yesterday when he joined us mm-hmm. um, so, raymond I, I i'll step in here because we just got some clarification on the number of banks that are going to be saved by the ghana amalgamated trust okay. our sources are telling us that it's going to be heritage bank universal merchants bank umb omni bank Agric Development bank adb national investments bank nib and prudential bank it says premium bank is excluded for now okay remember what the uh, graphic said was a potential beneficiary yes we said premium bank is excluded for now it's interesting because omni and premium were supposed to merge, merge yeah. remember mm-hmm. and i remember speaking to um some officials of omni bank who were telling us that that major will go through and so i don't know how the, but they did admit when i was speaking to them that even after the omni bank and and premium bank major they will not have enough capital to meet the minimum capital requirements. They will not meet the 400 yeah, million. So true. they will still need external help. Remember, they were, they were initially supposed to be GN Bank, Sahel Sahara Bank, and Omni Bank. Mm-hmm. And then Omni Bank walked out of that major and began speaking with Premium Bank. We don't know what happens now to Sahel Sahara and, and GN, GN Bank. Yeah. Of course, when Philip joins us, we are going to get more details of all of these of all of these issues. So you want to stay with us and all the analysis as Raymond began. Uh, but thanks so much to our sources who are uh, giving us this information as it breaks. The Bank of Ghana is supposed to make an official statement on all of that. Either today or later in the week, we are closely monitoring that space. But at uh, this morning, we certainly, certainly have something to tell you. Anyway, good news, isn't it? Um, actually, um, no, I'm not going to, to do that. I'm going to actually do um, the DR Congo story and the Burkina Faso um, story. So we know that um, <clears throat> there's there's been voting in Congo, the much delayed election. It's been two years overdue. We, Mr. Kabila, who is the current president, took over from his father um, in 2001. So he's been president for 17 years. He was supposed to step down two years ago. The election was postponed after the Electoral Commission said it needed more time to register votes. Now, that decision triggered violent clashes um, for a number of reasons. The run-up to the poll was hit by controversy over the exclusion of about 1.26 million um, electorates. Um, Also, the Electoral Commission had said that voting could not take place in the eastern cities of Beni and Butembo because of the Ebola virus. Now, the um, current president is backing his interior minister, Mr. Emmanuel um, Shadri and and so he's gunning for him to win. Now what's happening is that the opposition candidate, one of them, Martin Fayilu, his campaign team has accused the government of ordering the shutdown of internet services across the country so that um, I guess as it were, the information will not be widespread, the votes will not be the um, results, sorry, will not be put out there and there'll be a problem with information and this is causing a lot of problems. Now the BBC has interviewed um, the opposition 
opposition and they have said that they believe that Mr. Kabila's government is creating a mess on election day in order to trigger legal challenges. So um, that's what's happening in Congo. Not very, um, not very good. And also in Burkina Faso, um, they've declared a state of emergency in several northern provinces um, because Islamist, group, Islamist groups have intensified attacks in the areas bordering Mali. Security has deteriorated big time because jihadis are seeking to increase their influence across the poly police um, scrublands of, of that country. And so our neighbors are not doing very good. Raymond, uh, you, you are the international affairs guy, but this Burkina Faso situation, are we getting... Should we be worried? They just are northern Just last neighbors. month, um, ECOWAS actually put up a response team quickly to try and deal with the situation. The problem has been the lack of proper coordination on the response, only for, not only from the sub-region, but also from the AU and how we prioritize that. Mindful of the fact that, you see, we've had insurgents in Mali for God knows how long. And sometimes they coordinate with those in Nigeria too. So the attacks in Cote d'Ivoire, the ones in Burkina Faso, there was a recent one that people even talked about. It actually makes the sub-region a bit um, difficult to live in. And if you've seen the other embassies trying to warn their people about potentials of violence and all of this happening, in, I think now the sub-region has recognized that we need to deal with it in a much more coordinated way. We need to actually deal with it in a way that makes a lot of sense. So the security team has been meeting consistently with that. We hope they will not defer actual mobilization to the Western world. That has been our biggest problem. We hope they will not still pretend that they don't have the competence and the qualification to have a frontal engagement with these groups. You mean and raise for an once, army? Very, I mean, they can raise an army, but sometimes they complain about resources and all of that. Okay. We should have, and this brings to the main call, we should have a standing army for both the AU, if you want to do for even ECOWAS too. Assuming that all the plenty countries in the continent decide to put an army they will easily get rid of these small groups which attack small small units in this in the countries in the sub-region and makes it looks like they are ungovernable states within a bigger entity at a point during the boko haram the height of the boko haram yeah. crisis those countries those neighboring countries yeah. nigeria cameroon and a number of the, those countries raised the force i remember also that um during the gambia situation yeah. when mr yaya jame had to hand over mm -hmm. a ghana contributed soldiers to that yes. ECOWAS force that was sent there. Now, uh, yeah. uh, anyway, I'll, I'll come to you on this matter because I never realized how close this is to us until I was riding through Grand Bassam. Mm -hmm. And I and you know, Grand yeah. Bassam yeah. was the site of a terrorist attack. That's true. And Grand Bassam, and the distance between Grand Bassam and Takwadi is shorter than the distance between Takwadi and Accra. Yeah. And so this is much more serious. And if you look at the, the real root causes, because security experts will tell you that the real root causes of these terror situations are things like unemployment. That's true. Yeah. And if you look at the unemployment situation within Ghana as it is, it's I, I, not to sound like an alarmist, but is it possible that this is it's volatile enough for Burkina Faso situation, which was seeping down for Mali, to seep down into northern Ghana? I mean, absolutely. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote... I'm going to quote Shata Wale, which is kind of ridiculous yeah, in this go situation. Ahead. But you know, I remember that and when he was here, we asked him about the force of his movement and how he's able to mobilize the youth and stuff. And he said that, you know, a lot of the youth, the grassroots youth, the people that sometimes we don't pay attention to, are looking for a more personal form of leadership. They're looking for purpose. They're looking for something to do. They're looking for employment. And so, yes, I believe that if we do not um, get our act together in, in those areas, then we are kind of setting the stage um, for this kind of thing every time that um, um, crime has gone up remember there was an influx of, of carjacking there was um, burglary and all of that at the a beginning of, of this year yeah, there was, was a lot I mean of, of 2018 yeah there was yes. a lot of them um, a lot of the people who were responsible were really young men and women who were unemployed I mean even the Bible says that the devil finds work for idle hands but then there's also the issue of extremism because it would be unfair to just you know say that okay this is something that could happen it is an extremist movement mm -hmm. are the Muslims in Ghana as extremists they have there's there's been no indication um so far that we have that but there have been rumors here and there especially with our, our border control in terms of bringing in arms i mean we're, we're prime for for these kinds of activities we don't have very good border control um arms can come in very easily our licensing laws i remember at the beginning of the year i was doing um the licensing story about guns and stuff there are still people who have guns you know we don't have the system systems are not tight enough to really protect us from 
you know, so if guess, this was coming to I guess Ghana. generally when we see headlines like these coming from other African countries, we should be more careful. Yeah, yes. And I was happy that not long ago, you know, the National Security said they were doing a drill about possible terror reactions and all of that. They've done one at the Akramo before. They've also chosen some institutions and how to do with it. I, I, I ask people all the time, what's your... What do you think is the protocol when you think that a place has been attacked? Mm. Because in our part of the world, when we hear the bang, that's where we head to. We go to see what's happening there. We don't mm-hmm. run from it. That, mm-hmm. That's the difficulty in that yeah, part of the yeah. world. So I think some sensitization is required. Why the big boys at the top deal with the bigger problems mm. of trying to get rid of it at the roots? We should get people actively engaging because really information matters a lot. If I know that my neighbor is actually planning with some people to do some attacks. It's prudent that I'm able to inform the security institutions who to inform first how this information is going to protect me and all of that are important. But we should be able to coordinate better. Uh, of course, when you have serious threats, you have to deal with it and deal with it properly. So we've talked about our money and our safety. What's next? Yeah, let me give you the Kantanka cars. It's a very important one. Okay. Now, you know that they have what they call it, nice cars, right? The Kantanka Technology Center yes, has very, very nice. Cars that yes. can nice. shout on the president and call him a thief. I, I'm just you know, said that anybody who's <laughs> you don't have the key settings, so Ooh. you are the team. I get you. It yes. happened to the president. I'm it not saying that it didn't happen. <laughs> but, but, but they have other cars too. We also understand that they're going to put together the smaller cars that's for consumption at very low rates. That's going to can be used for Uber and other things. But the bigger things they are doing is that they have now launched their armored vehicle, which is some range finder. So they can lock targets from afar. Like the way they do with the big, uh, what they call it, um, what's the name of those countries? The countries with the, with the huge, uh, how do you call them? The huge bombs and all of that. Mm-hmm. They can lock a target up in a, in a different country and go and chase it with their bomb and kill the people there. Mm-hmm. This one has a very wonderful range finder too. It is also supposed to be an improvement on the current uh, armored vehicles that you find. If you see right. the picture in there. I mean, it's, it's like a military vehicle. Yes. It's like a big, big and, and, and this one we understand is more cozy. It's not, I mean, like the, if you have been through one of those open days where you're allowed to sit in the armored vehicle, this one we understand is far better than those ones. So I don't know how government is going to coordinate. At least... If the Air Force stand, stand, stand by force, would want armored vehicles. You see, for the first time, we should, yes, we can should get look locally, locally manufactured and not go out there. Armored and vehicle. Yes, of course. I'm happy that government says that they want to help them too. Because that conversation we've been having for some time. They've been saying that they wanted to help them from when President Ekufaru was campaigning. Yeah. What help has been given? The help on this way, I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, <laughs> let me bring you another story that you will be interested in. Is that particular... Okay, so we are doing an eco as well. Like, yes. Yeah. 2,750 tons of cereals have been given to us to continue with our free SHS program. The Agriculture Ministry took it. They will give it to the various schools and they're supposed to serve in places where the food that we are giving them will not get as early as possible. And of course, I mean, it's not only maize, it's also how they call Rice, it. Rice, yes. sorghum, and yeah. millet. Of all the wait, others wait, are supposed 250, to. 250,000 tons of cereal. Yes, please. Yes. Have been given to us by. 2,750. 2,750 2, 2, tons. tons. Yes. Wait, have been given to us by ECOWAS. Yes. Wait. Mm-hmm. Wait. Wait. The planting for food and jobs program had maize, rice, yes. sorghum, Please. and selected vegetables, wait, mm-hmm. wait, yeah. like chili pepper and tomatoes as the key plants. Mm-hmm. The planting for food and jobs program is supposed to have caused a food glut. Yes. As so that we have to too much maize. They haven't been harvested. No, 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 no. We have too much so maize. The so the price of maize went down. There's a glad that we have a long time. I mean, I mean, thank you to our, our partner countries at yes, like ECOWAS. That is redirected elsewhere. No, I'm not saying you know, me. I'm not Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Education. I'm not saying this. I'm just asking the Minister of Agriculture. So where's the excess yeah, but maize, but rice? But because, and it's funny that it's the same crops. Maize, rice, sorghum. But Daniel, the handover, the um, Daily Graphic says the handover was the concrete response of the ECOWAS Commission to the request of the government of Ghana that had committed to replenish grain for grain. So the government of Ghana actually asked for it. So we asked for what we, we have too much of. Yes, I, I heard of we doing the bumper harvest. Yeah, exactly. That is why. So we didn't expect no. that we have a bumper harvest. We had a bumper harvest. Did they say, the, the, does the story say when we asked for it? 
Oh no, um, no, it does not. No. Yes. Okay. But it would make sense that Equus will not just bring you over a time. I mean, of course, it takes a long time for the bureaucratic wheels of so Equus. Maybe this was so maybe we ask them response. So maybe we ask them before we started the planting for food and jobs program, which we expected because we gave out a specific <laughs> amount of fertilizer. Yes. And and also um okay. the government is expanding its warehouse drive by eighty. So it's it's okay, yeah. Okay. Let's move on. You, you let's move on. And the online news review is brought to you by Zenith no, Bank in your best interest. <laughs> <laughs> and well, good edit. Oh, you have more good news for me. Oh, no. I'll no, come no, back no, to no, 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 no. Equus is fine. Equus is fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. And the online news review is brought to you by Zenith Bank in your best interest and Goyle Good Energy. Now, Goyle says official powered more bonanza for if you need customers. There are many rewards still to be claimed at all Goyle service stations. Over 900,000 Goyle customers are getting rewards. This month alone, 800 more customers claimed their ultimate rewards. In November, 720 had their. So, please, when I say this month, um, forgive me, I'm talking about December. So, in December, 800. In November, 720. And you can also win yours, like Mohammed Abdullah Kamin, who had a thousand cities worth of fuel on his go card. Just buy 80 Ghana cities worth of fuel and more. Follow the promotion instructions and you can win a um, hotel stay for two and so many other souvenirs from Goyle. Goyle Good Energy, Goyle Yenara Yedia. This promo ends this month, the month of January 2019. Now, the festive season is winding up, uh, but Zenith Bank and MasterCard has made it so much more exciting this season. Use your Zenith Bank MasterCard on any Zenith Bank POS at a participating retail shop this festive season and enjoy amazing offers. Don't be left out. So whenever you go to any shop, just ask them about the details about this MasterCard promotion. Uh, terms and conditions apply. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. Let me quickly run you through these headlines. Four arrested over alleged rape to death of plantain chips seller this happened um in bokrom limex quarry um on saturday december 30. that's terrible 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 um so her, her this this plantain chip seller is called naomi opoku her body was found lying in a supine um position in the area on the following day that's on sunday hmm, she couldn't cross over to see 2019 that's terrible the bbc.com also records a sharp rise in air crash deaths in 2018. 2017 um, had uh, 44 air crash deaths. Mm. 2018 had 556. That's serious. Okay, the worst was uh, recorded in October when the Lion Air plane crashed in Indonesia, killing 189. So some of these individual crashes had a mm. lot of deaths. Um, but anyway, our hearts go out to everyone who lost someone in any sort of accident. We're going to go for the BBC News at 7 coming up after this. Stay with us. This was Kwame's life before Interplast in Green Irrigation System. <laughs> Kwame.